this episode of The Word Made Fresh, we are gonna play with the cat in the tent, and we're gonna ask what happens when you have a spiritual encounter and you try to put it in a box. I'm Reverend Jim Keat, Digital Minister at the Riverside Church, and this is The Word Made Fresh, the weekly video Bible study and sermon prep resource where we talk about an upcoming lectionary text, and then you can leave comments in the comments below, because that's what the comments are for, and you know, yeah. Uh, also, yes, my cat is in a tent. It is actually a cat tent made for cats. He loves it. He's a little ferocious right now. You can, can you see that? He, uh, he, he sliced me up pretty good this morning when we were making the bed. He's just a monster, and we love him. Okay, so this uh, upcoming Sunday's gospel text is in the book of Matthew because we've really been in Matthew, but we're skipping ahead. This is officially the end of Epiphany and we're on Transfiguration Sunday and then after this comes a whole lot of Lent. So this Sunday, Matthew 17 verses 1 through 9, here's what it has to say. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. So it's just the four of them, a little camping trip. Hey, camping trip. And he was transfigured before them and his face shone like the sun and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them and from the cloud a voice said, this is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and they were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them saying, get up, do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Okay, so I, I really want us to focus on one specific area, but first let's cover a couple things happening in here. Jesus, Peter, James, John, top of a mountain, camping trip, suddenly Moses and Elijah. Now, what's the significance of these two individuals showing up? Moses, Elijah, law, prophets. So much of Jesus' work has been, especially in Matthew, where Matthew is proof texting himself with the Hebrew scriptures and the prophets, it's been a fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And so here in the Transfiguration, we see Jesus showing up literally with the embodiment of the law and the prophets. So it's just worth noting why those two people, it's not just two random dudes from the Hebrew scriptures, it's the specific people who represent law, prophets. Jesus kind of being a fulfillment. You okay, monster? I think he's okay. Okay, now this is what I want us to spend a little time on. Peter's impulse is to build three shelters for Jesus, Elijah, and Moses. Cool, nice, nice idea, right? Hospitable, creating a, a little space for them to spend the night in comfort. You can go into this a thousand different ways, but I just want us to focus on it kind of in the ways that we continue to have a similar impulse in our world today. Peter has this profoundly spiritual encounter with Jesus and the law and the prophets, and his first impulse is to construct a building to fit it inside, like to contain it. Now maybe his impulse is to make it comfortable and give it a space where it, 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 it works well, but it also ends up being a place that kind of boxes it in, you know, four walls and a steeple on top. Now I'm not saying that's exactly what Peter was doing, but I think we do that sort of thing in our world today. You have a spiritual encounter and then suddenly you gotta make up some like dogma around it and that turns into religion, so to speak. I want us to just think about those spiritual encounters we've had in our lives and the ways we try to put structure around them, like to contain them or to replicate them or, oh, I gotta have that spiritual experience again, so let's play the same set of songs in the same way or let's assemble the chairs or make sure I'm wearing my lucky shirt or something. I don't know what it might be. We, we do all these things where we encounter God and then we try to put God in a box so others can encounter God the same way we did. And, and I don't know, I just think that's not how God works. I don't think God can fit in a box, period. And I don't think that we can replicate one person's experience of God for another. 
Uh, What I like about this story is Jesus takes his friends to the top of a mountain. That alone is opening them up to have an encounter with God in a unique way. Not, okay, if we say these prayers and then follow this liturgy and then do it this way, A plus B plus C equals encounter with God. So, okay, I'm, I'm rambling a bit, but I think this is just a fascinating thing that we do in our world. So maybe, maybe let's start with this. Where have you seen others doing this? Where have you seen people trying to create a formula for God or capture God or build this structure around a spiritual encounter and give it to others, sell it to others? Uh. And then maybe in your own life, where have you had a spiritual experience? And then what have you done? What's your response to discovering the divine in the daily and the Christ in the common and the holy ground underneath every step? Yeah, that's some good stuff to think about. I'm going to go check on Whitman, and we'll be back next week with another episode of The Word Made Fresh. Oh, and get ready on February 26th, Wednesday, it's Ash Wednesday, begins a new season of Be Still and Go, our devotional podcast every single day from Ash Wednesday to Easter Sunday, a new episode. You can subscribe in your favorite podcast app or just go to trcnyc.org slash be still and go, and we'll have every episode right there waiting for you. Just click play, and then you can start listening. Okay, let's go check on Whitman.